Mr. President, I move, Mr. President, I move that this bill be now read a second time. <coughs> Mr. President, the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Amendment Change of Sex Bill 2014 would amend the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act 1995 to allow a married person who has undergone a sex affirmation procedure to have the person's sex registered or to have the record of the person's sex altered. It's been a real pleasure to work closely with Alex Greenwich, the independent MP for Sydney, my parliamentary colleague in the lower house, to put this important bill forward. Alex will be speaking to, to an identical bill to this in the lower house this morning. I want to speak today about the substance of the bill directly and also how it connects to the current state of affairs for trans people across New South Wales and across the world. I will be using the shorthand term trans today as a recognized umbrella term for transgender, transsexual, and gender. Order, please. People. Order, please. Order. There's far too much audible conversation on all sides of the chamber. It will be difficult for Hansard to hear Dr. Fruki's speech. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the current unmarried requirement within the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act 1995 forces married people who have undergone a sex affirmation procedure and who are wishing to have their sex registered or to alter a record of their sex to choose between divorcing their partner and living with an incorrect sex on their most important personal identity document, their birth certificate. The current provision primarily affects married transgender people who have undergone procedures to change their sex to align with their gender identity. It also further adds to the societal stigmatization experienced by trans people and unnecessarily complicates the already enormous and often traumatic process of transition from one sex to another. The Greens Bill would allow the continuation of a person's marriage during and after applying to alter the record of their sex or register a change of sex and to allow the registrar to make changes to the register accordingly. The bill would amend sections 32B, 32D, 32DA, and 32DC of the Act to omit the relevant requirements that persons registering a change of sex or altering a record of their sex are to be unmarried. The bill's introduction has the support of groups and individuals such as the Gender Centre, the New South Wales Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby, the Carmen Group Memorial Trust, Transgender Victoria, Australian Marriage Equality, and the Human Rights Commissioner, Tim Wilson. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart for their endorsement and support. Many trans people living in New South Wales, whether they have undergone surgery or not, are in loving marriages. They just haven't changed their documents to reflect their new sex, because the law doesn't allow them to. Australian couples who have written or spoken to me about their direct experience about the current unmarried requirement of the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act all share disbelief at the current state of the law. As one couple, Marty and Kate Winkworth, said to the Star Observer in a piece relating to this reform in August, and I quote, you always hear the politicians trying to keep the family together. Well, we're staying together and they're not doing anything to support us. We should be supported rather than ostracized. Another couple noted that the current law around divorce requires them to state that their relationship has suffered an irreconcilable difference. Of course, their relationship has suffered no such difference, and they do not wish to lie. So they have remained married while tolerating living with incorrect records, which can complicate things like background checks for employment, proof of identity, and access to social services. Moreover, the current law affects people who have not yet entered into marriages. I was at the Australian's Young Greens conference last week, and a young trans woman in her mid-twenties, who was speaking on a panel with me, lamented that marriage was very difficult for her to imagine due to the possibility that she would wish to legally transition in the future. I also note that the current state of affairs may impact intersex people whose sex may be indeterminate or may vary over time. People in this chamber might ask, why is this important? This seems like a rather technical and minor issue for a very small part of the community. Why are the Greens and Alex Greenwich focused on making this amendment? In response, I would like to share some survey statistics with the chamber. 
49% of surveyed Australian transgender people <coughs> have been diagnosed with depression in the past. 87% of surveyed Australian transgender people have experienced at least one form of discrimination or stigma on the basis of their gender. A large American study found that 41%, almost half of transgender or gender non-conforming people, have attempted suicide. Trans people face disproportionately high levels of homelessness, poverty, unemployment, and sickness. It should go without saying that we need to talk about trans law reform. While awareness of trans issues has thankfully increased in recent years, it's fair to say that the stigma, shame, and day-to-day -day challenges of being trans are still very real for this community. While concrete numbers are notoriously <coughs> difficult to pin down, estimates have suggested that as many as one in 200 people may identify as transgender. The spectrum is broad and may include anyone who has ever experienced gen gender dysphoria and goes to post-op transsexuals. The relative absence of trans people from public, political and business life can be explained by the discrimination and prejudice that they face in their day-to-day -day lives. Simple tasks such as getting to work, going to the doctor or attending university can be an enormous emotional, physical and psychological struggle. Of course, there are many trans people who live good, successful and happy lives, but struggle is a common experience. This is not helped by the lack of trans role models and public figures for young people. Thankfully, only very recently, we have started to see real trans icons emerge in Australian society. Top military official Group Captain Kate McGregor who I believe was the first ever trans <coughs> panelist on ABC's Q&A just this Monday, comes to mind. Internationally, in the worlds of media and the arts, we have leading advocates and figures such as Janet Mock, Laura Jane Grace, Chaz Bono, Paris Lees, and Laverne Cox, who earlier this year became the first trans woman to grace the cover of Time magazine. Time's cover showed Cox in a stunning blue dress and the words, the transgender tipping point. America's next civil rights frontier. It is my hope that this, this is also one of Australia's next civil rights frontiers. <coughs> Let's not mince words. The law, as it stands, says to one of the most vulnerable sections of the community that we do not care about your relationships and we do not believe you're deserving of dignity and respect. This must change. This has to change. With regards to the bill's consistency with the Federal Marriage Act. Let's be clear that this bill is not about introducing, introducing same-sex marriage by stealth. Importantly, the object of the Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act is to ensure New South Wales has correct and up-to-date records, including of change of sex. People can and do change their sex if they are married. And indeed, because of this, there are already a small but significant amount of same-sex couples who are married in New South Wales. The Births, Deaths and Marriages Registration Act should enable government records to correctly reflect changes of sex. It is not the role of the Act to interfere with marriage. I'm very proud of the fact that some of my Greens colleagues in parliaments around the country, Tammy Franks, MLC in South Australia, and Nick McKim in Tasmania, have this week also spoken to their bills which seek to remove the relevant unmarried requirements in their state legislation. I want to reiterate that the Greens will always advocate for the human rights of LGBTI people. However, we must view this bill as just the start of a broader conversation about trans law reform, including legislating for important reforms such as removing surgical requirements for legal transition. In her interview for Time magazine in May this year, Laverne Cox was clear and I quote, there's not just one trans story, there's not just one trans experience. And I think what they need to understand is that not everybody who is born feels that their gender identity is in alignment with what they're assigned at birth based on their genitalia. If someone needs to express their gender in a way that is different, that is okay. And they should not be denied health care. They should not be bullied. They don't deserve to be victims of violence, she said. No one should be forced to choose between divorce, divorcing the person they love and living with identity records that do not reflect who they are. One of the main reasons I joined the Greens and got involved in politics was so I could advocate for changes in law that would move us towards a more equal society. I believe many of us here in this chamber 
have similar aspirations. As members of parliament, this is a real privilege for us to be here. So I urge you to use this privilege and support this bill, which will help alleviate discrimination, trauma, and devastation from the lives of marginalized people across our state. I commend this bill to the House.